All right, so uh, it's four o'clock. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start now, uh, if everyone's ready. Uh, so hello, everyone. My name is Gatana Lama, and uh, here to talk to you guys about the uh, EQ2 macros and also ACT triggers. And uh, what this really boils down to is, um, like, especially when you're playing at level 95 and all these fancy dungeons with how they're setting everything up, you find yourself in situations where you, know, you have to keep certain abilities on certain players, uh, such as like you know the Mage Cure and Dominion. You know, sometimes they don't have a, set, a macro set up, so you know, it'd be really nice if you could really streamline that sort of uh, process. Or if you're a dirge, you have to have Gravitas on your healer. Well, you know, when the, your healer changes every group that you run, you're resetting the macro every time, or something like that, or you, you find yourself targeting a different person to cast it. So that can also get a bit annoying. Um, so what I'm gonna be talking about is like, you know, different macro setups, uh, just a few examples uh, to really help out with that sort of process. All right, and uh, where you sort of begin on this is actually with the macro uh, tab. And if you click on it, you, know, you can make your own macro. And I have these lovely commands in here. And uh, what I have in this is actually the five different types of macro commands. You have just a simple command line, which you, just works exactly like the, uh, the chat tab. You can do a slash command or anything else in there. You have your uh, ability that you can cast on other players. And you even have your abilities uh, that can cast on uh, certain enemies or just the ones that don't have any target whatsoever. Then you also have the two different types of uh, item macros, which is to use an item, which might be from your inventory or your bags, or even just to equip an item. And so these are really the fundamentals of uh, making your different macros, and it's really the five basic steps that we're going to be using today. All right? And uh, when we're making these macros, we have certain resources available to us. Uh, the two, th I'm sorry. <laughs> I also forgot about this, I threw it in last minute. Um, the icon in the top right of your macro tab, like when you're making a new macro, um, if you drag anything from your inventory, from your bags, from your spell book, if you can drag it with your mouse, you can actually set it as the macro icon. So there's a huge range of uh, customization there, and it's something that I want to get into, but uh, basically with the time limit today, I want to leave some time for Q&A at the end. So. I'm not going to have everything in this PowerPoint, but I'm going to make a post on the EQ2 forums, and it's going to have a lot, a lot more in there. All right, so uh, going back to where I was at, which is the resources, uh, EQ2 Wikia, I really like this website, uh, just for the fact that they have a whole page dedicated to slash commands. And uh, whenever I'm trying to make a certain macro, you know, you're trying to find certain abilities that you can put in there, especially slash commands. And so it's a great website to use. Uh, also, if you can't find it on there, uh, the EQ2 chat window. If you type in there a slash and just put any word in there, if you hit the tab key, you actually get a pop-up message that looks a lot like this in the uh, chat tab. So this is actually a great way to find the different commands in EQ2. So you just do a slash, you put a word in there, and if you hit the tab key, you can actually find all the commands that go with that sort of word. All right, and um, I'm gonna be giving more examples about um, as I go through this, but I'm gonna go ahead and start with something pretty hectic. Uh, it's called the alias command, and what it does is it lets us tell EQ2, we're going to make a new slash command, and when we make it, I want it to do this. And the value of this is actually, it works with the percent T. All right, and um, for those of you who don't know, when you're typing in EQ2 and you put percent T in there, it returns whatever your current target is. So if you do something such as, you know, a target command, you can make an alias that says, you know, target percent T, and when you do that command later on, it'll do whatever that target was. And to give an example of this, I went ahead and made an alias. So my new command is called slash hello there. And when I do slash hello there, I want to say hello there, comma, percent T. And so what's going on in this lovely little animation is I'm selecting the canine watcher and I'm hitting this alias command. So it's saving the canine watcher in there as a target for this command. So when I do slash hello there, even if I have something else targeted, it's pulling the command from when I made it. So it's gonna say the canine watcher, not Squire Morford, who I had uh, targeted when I typed in the uh, second command. All right, so uh, to give a bit more practical uh, example of this, uh, if I was going to assist someone, uh, if I was to hard, hard, hard macro this into EQ2, you know, I'd open up the macro tab, I'd do slash assist and, you know, I have my, you know, Vingeric or whoever your assassin is or your guardian or your coercer. You know, you might have their name just hard coded in there. So I'm always gonna assist this person. Well, what if sometimes, you know, uh, you have a change and all that? 
So really, uh, how we think about this is slash is this person t, you know, whoever my target is. And when I turn that into an alias uh, command, it's going to turn out to be slash alias, and my new command is going to be called main assist. And when I do that, it's going to be whoever I had targeted when I did this command. So now, my new command is just slash main assist. All right, so that's how that works, and you know this is an example of you know what it looks like in the UI. These are my two commands in there. So I use the one on the left to set the macro, and then the one on the right will just execute it. It doesn't change any settings in it. It just acts upon when I use the first command. All right, and uh, let's see here. All right, so this is another example of it, which is I want to cast something like grab toss on the healer. All right, but I do a lot of hugging, so I always have different healers. And I don't really feel like having to change the name in that specific macro, and I really don't want to deal with targeting the healer every like 30 seconds or whatever it is. So I'm going to try and make it an alias command. So uh, when I did this, the first thing I did was I went to the uh, spell list that they had on the EQ2 Wikia, and sure enough, I found this ability on there. And it had a pretty good write-up on it saying that when you type in this command, you put the player name next, and then the ability. Well, the player is going to be percent %t, and the ability is gravitas, so I know that. So I'm making a new command called gravitas. All right, so I do that, and I have that command, so the other one would just be slash gravitas. So I go into the game, I set the macro, and I use it. You know, it's all looking good, but I don't see the reuse on that. This is a bit of a problem. All right, so you know, I keep hitting it, and it's not up, and finally, you know, it goes. So how we fix this, is we actually go back to our, um, the macro that actually acts on it, and I'm gonna actually grab Gravitas, I'm gonna put it in there. And uh, the target, I'm gonna put something in there, but it's gonna be total bogus, essentially. And for example, in my target there, I put reuse display. I, I don't want it to cast that Gravitas on anyone, I just want it there, so that when I use Gravitas in game, it'll actually give me the reuse on that macro icon. So I can have one command that sets Gravitas and another one which will always cast off that same person until I set it again. And it'll give me the read display and everything else in there that a normal macro would for that. All right, so that's really all it looks like in there. So this is, uh, this next one, I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> jumping ahead of myself a little bit. Um, so, you know, this is again to reiterate the different types of uses. So, you know, if you have a mage gear that you're trying to keep on a specific healer for a fight, or any sort of temp buffs that you're trying to keep on uh, your specific group mates or even raid members, even targeting, uh, assisting, or maybe you need to keep your debuffs on a specific name. You can set that up to where you know, you're know you killing the ad to hit the target macro real quick, and you can get your debuff in and go back to the ads. So uh, alias is a really cool command for uh, simplifying some things like that. And uh, so yeah, uh, this next one that I have here, uh, I want to change my AAs and my hotbox <coughs> setup. And uh, I'm, I play a swashbuckler, which I'm constantly going between the left and the right prestige for AoEs and single target. So it can get a bit frustrating at times because, you know, I have to go into the, uh, the AA window, I have to click on a little uh, click down, select a new one, change all my hot bars and all that. I want to find a way to automate it. And uh, this example right here is really talking about, you know, how far you can take macros in game. All right, so where do I start? Well. Whenever I start a macro, I'm always thinking about, you know, what am I trying to solve? So I'll do a little bit of research. So I, you know, I pull the uh, AA tab open. And so I notice whenever I click on a different um, uh, AA spec, you know, in the top right, I get a little drop down where it has my server, my personal uh, options. And when I click on a new one, I have to commit it. So I'm thinking about, you know, okay, I have to find a different AA spec, and you also have to have a command for uh, committing it. So. Uh, just like I said uh, earlier on with the, uh, the chat window, I think about, you know, what would the game call it? So I type things such as slash achievement, slash alternate, slash AA, and I keep hitting tap every time. And eventually, you strike lucky on something. So for this example, I did slash AA, hit tap, and I get a bunch of options that show up. So I'm getting options like, you know, slash uh, load AA XML, so I know I'm on the right track. And sure enough, I see two down here towards the bottom that talk about committing an AA profile and also switching them. And when you find these types of commands, it never hurts to just try it and see what it does. Yeah. Yeah. You like that? <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go switch AA profile. And I type it in the, um, the chat window. And sure enough, it doesn't kill the game. 
Um, so it, it gives me a low return, and this is nice. Uh, some of the abilities, or I'm sorry, some of the uh, commands, when you put them in there, uh, if you didn't do it right, it'll give you a little message saying what is it expecting. So I see this little thing option, you know, it needs either a personal server in there, so I know I'm on the right track, and it needs something about an ID. So I go in there and I say, okay, you know, I'm gonna try this out and see what's going on. So sure enough, I figure out, you know, it's definitely personal and zero through two for the different AA specs. So I got that right, and I just try it in game. And I'm not doing uh, anything other than just typing in these commands. So I'm doing the switch A profile, and I'm typing the different number every time. And sure enough, it's finding all my different uh, personal specs in there. So it's loading it, and now I know I just need to do uh, the commit command to apply it. So I'm pretty feeling I'm feeling pretty confident on there. So this is what my macro is going to look like for right now. And I actually need two because uh, for this example, I'm going between my single target spec and my AOE spec. So I have two different macros. They're pretty much exactly the same other than a one number difference. All right, so I go ahead and do that. And now I just do one more little test in there. So I hit my AOE spec and it goes ahead, it changes to the AOE spec and it commits it on the spot. I don't have to do anything else other than hit that one button in the macro uh, window. So I thought that was pretty cool, but now I, why stop there? You know, I also have the hot bars to worry about. So, yeah, let's dive into that. <laughs> so, again, I look at the research and everything else, and I'm looking up all the commands and all that, and I see, you know, the, the interesting things, you know, what they call the words and everything. Uh, you can do different layouts. You can even change, uh, for every hot bar, you can change what the key is to access that specific icon. So I even had like a little, a little uh, utility hotbar, which was my D-pad, one through uh, zero. And um, you can do different uh, uh, setups and everything. So I thought that was pretty cool. But the words that stuck out here is they keep calling them either hotbar or hot, uh, hot keys in there. So again, I type in the slash hotbar, slash hot keys, and you know, eventually, hopefully, you get lucky. And sure enough, they have these two commands in here for saving and loading hot keys. Well, again, go to do the brave thing and actually type it in the game. So what I do is I save the, I do the save hotkeys and I put a name in there and then I change all of the icons on a specific hot bar. So I change every icon that was on there. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> uh, sure enough, you know, it did exactly what I thought it would do, which is it saved the hotkeys and no matter what I change it to, I can load that specific setup again. So this is exactly uh, what I need for my a little switcher for the AA spec. So uh, this gets into a little bit of the more technical part of you know, how I approach it. And uh, when I, one thing I noticed about the hotkeys uh, saving and loading is it sometimes does it with the macros. And it's one thing I didn't cover in this, but I at least made sure to include it in this step. So um, for these hotkey files, I have my AE and my single target. I, I'm I'm going to essentially say to myself, I'm going to name them this. I'm not going to save the hotkeys, I'm just going to keep in mind what I'm going to be calling them later. So I come up with that. Then uh, in the little AE macro, the uh, AA macros for the loading and committing them, I go ahead and add the load hotkeys in there. So I haven't saved them, but I'm already calling what I'm going to loading them. And because they're not saved, I'm not really calling anything if, in, in case I hit the uh, macro by accident. So then I go ahead and you know, whatever AA spec I'm in, I'm going to go ahead and put out all my hotkeys uh, for the, you know, all the AA abilities that are in there and everything else. And uh, the important thing I'm going to do is the macro to load the opposite AA spec. I'm actually going to include that in the current AA, and then I'm going to save the hotkeys file. So I have everything in there how I want it, I'm going to save it, and I'm going to load the other AA spec, and I'm going to repeat those last few steps. I'm going to lay out the new hotkeys, include the macro to load the previous spec, and I'm going to see the hotkeys again. So now, I have these two macros in there. For all that, we ended up with a three command macro. But when I take it in game, I just hit that one button, which I actually saved to the end key, and it loads my new AA spec, it commits it, and I have the correct top bars uh, all on the same screen. So that was just one button press to save a whole lot of hassle, which might take up really you know, like two to three minutes if you're having to do that by hand every time. So I thought that was pretty cool. And um, so yeah, um, a little bit of review of <laughs> macros before I jump into some of the uh, ACT stuff. Uh, you have the five different commands. You have uh, the command line, which you can type a slash command just like a uh, chat window. 
you have the item used, the item equip, and you have the two different spell commands, which is the spells that you cast on the allies, and the spells that you either have no target, or they go on a specific enemy. And uh, you also have to think about, you know, where do you start with these macros? You're trying to think about, you know, what problem are you trying to solve with this macro? And then you need to find out how to do it. So you might try, you know, typing into different words in the uh, chat window, or you might try to find it online, such as the EQ2 wiki website. And then it's a little bit of uh, thinking about, you know, how EQ2 thinks for all the commands, uh, for, you know, how you organize them in the macros. And that last line might not make, may, uh, might not make much sense with what I showed, but I had others, other examples which really played into that. Uh, which will go on the, uh, a forum post I'm going to be doing uh, probably here on like Tuesday or Wednesday on the EQ2 forum. Uh, but anyways, uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump into ACT for a little bit. And um, I'm not really going to focus on too much, uh, like, you know, the whole parsing and all that. But uh, we're going to be focusing on the triggers and also the timers uh, that are in ACT. So we have our triggers window. And so we're just focusing on the little top part right there. Uh, there's a few different lines and all that. So the first one is you have the custom trigger. And that's basically, is it going to make a sound? And if it makes a sound, what is it going to do? Is it just going to be a beep? Uh, are you going to have a custom WAV file that you recorded or maybe, you know, a music file or something? Or you can even do text-to-speech. So you can actually have it say a custom message if you want. Uh, then you have also uh, the regular expression. And that's basically what we're coming through the log files. Uh, because this is a parsing program, it's trying to find a specific word or group of words or whatever else that's in there. All right, so you have that, and that's essentially what makes, what triggers the trigger in this, is whatever it's trying to find in the log file. Then you have the category, and the category is basically just a way to keep it grouped. Uh, it, ha it helps you out with, you know, making sure everything's in the correct uh, spot, which I'm pretty lazy, and I just leave everything in general anyways. I'm pretty bad about that. Uh, and lastly, the most important for this is a timer or tab window. And what this uh, little chat box is, is if there's a timer by this exact same name, you can trigger it. And that leads us into the uh, next part, which is a timer window. Uh, on this last screen, I actually had it put in here as charm rec for the timer or tab name. And sure enough, over here, I have the same name at the very top. All right, and I have, you know, also in this, uh, the two different um, sort of options in here that matter. Uh, the very top left is the, uh, the trigger name, and that's just the name of this timer. And so you have that. How long is your timer going to be? Are you going to have a warning in there? You know, uh, say for at 11 seconds, uh, towards the bottom I'll have the custom warning sound, and that's what's triggered right there. So at 11 seconds left, I want it to tell me that my timer's going to be up in 10 seconds. All right, and also you have display settings. Uh, so by default, uh, ACT has radial, tri radial timers in there. So it has a little pie chart that sort of gets smaller over time. Well, if you turn it off, it'll be a bar graph instead. All right, so you have that. And also, uh, for an important thing for keeping sort of another uh, level of organization is display in panel A and B. Uh, by default, everything goes in panel A, and I usually save that for all my hostile spells, uh, such as you know the dragons, AEs, or anything else. And panel B, I like to use for my personal buffs. Uh, it's not going to have as much in it, but it's important because, you know, it's my attempts and everything else. That's another way to add um, an extra cue for your abilities. Right, so I got that, and also the global settings, uh, which is basically used to turn on panel B. By default, it only shows the one panel, but you can set the other one up in there. All right, so got that. And again, just to reiterate, uh, the timer or tab name goes in the trigger name for the, uh, the spell timer. And that's how you link them. All right, so think, yeah. So again, just like the macros, you know, you're trying to think of, well, what are we trying to catch here? Is it combat data we're looking for? Or, you know, is, does it really matter? Is it something we can just put a random text in the macro? What are we tracking? You know, is it a debuff that we're trying to, you know, how long is the debuff up for? Or is it a reuse on something like uh, your charms or specific items or even potions? And also, you know, do you need a warning? So uh, for this one, I looked at the Eric and Novelty card, and I, I changed the image a little bit, but uh, the two important aspects I'm looking for are up there. It lasts for 18 seconds, and the reuse is two minutes. So because I have two times up here, I'm going to go ahead and split it off into two separate timers. So if I have two timers, it means I also need two triggers. So the first trigger is going to be charms in, and 
I'm, it's just going to be Windows 7. Then I'm going to have another one for the reuse. And really all I need in there, I'm just going to put a bogus command into my uh, EQ2 macro. And it's not going to do anything in game. There's no command for this. So EQ2 is going to ignore it, but ACT will pick it up. So I have that. And then uh, this is the same slide from earlier. But uh, in this area, you know, everything is connected. I have it named as Charmrec down there. And it's loaded into this. So when I'm in EQ2, I have my macro set up. And if everything goes right, I can actually have ACT uh, track the timer for when it's up and also call it out when it's over. And the important uh, importance of this is it's not just an added visual, but also because of the warning tab on there, I can set up an audible cue. You know, there's a lot going on on our UIs, especially if you're a raider. You know, everything that's going on on the screen is just uh, it's pretty hectic. So you can use this to get an extra level of uh, information, uh, even audible. All right, so got that. And so yeah, just thinking to reiterate now. Uh, what are you trying to find? What are you tracking? And just think about you know what kind of warnings you need. All right. And uh, again, just to sort of say you no, know, sort of ideas on this. You know, if you have specific uh, buffs or debuffs uh, abilities, you're trying to make sure you always keep up, or you know, even tracking your timers and reuse for certain charms and items. Uh, so yeah, um, that's all I put in there for that. And um, just wanted to see if anyone had any questions. Do you about have a YouTube channel? <laughs> <laughs> I do not, but I do have Oreos. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you have a question, just like Sutton did over there, you can have an Oreo if you so desire. Would you like one? <laughs> not a bribe. Not a bribe. <laughs> Would you like one? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, um, I will have it on the forum as well. Uh, probably, I'm going to try and get it up on like, Tuesday or Wednesday if I can. Because um, I'm in Eastern Town, it's going to be a long way at home. But I'm definitely going to try and get them up there. Uh, if you'd like, you know, if there's anything you want to see more in depth, I can talk about it again if you'd like. Um, or if you want to wait for the forum for me, so you're like, no, you're okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, would you like an organ? <laughs> Not a bribe. Not a bribe. <laughs> well, what I appreciate uh -huh. when you do a post it, mm -hmm. um, the the ability, the alias ability that you were showing, mm -hmm. I need to be able to use. Correct. Um, I'm not sure I quite got it. I mm -hmm. need examples. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so pretend you're a healer mm -hmm. in the example, and you need to target the tank in your room. Right. Okay. To cast buffs and heals. Yeah. Um. Let me go ahead and pull that and slide up. And not the main tank or the name. Uh huh. So um, so pretend all of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me go back. Where was this? Let's see here. Yeah. <laughs> I offer that service at about 50 flat in an hour or something like that. Um, so this right here is the Gravitas smacker that I set up. But really, you know, it doesn't have to be Gravitas. Uh, it could be like, you know, your death joke, for example. So instead of saying up there, you know, um, Gravitas at the far right of that left command, that's a, that's a command I'm actually calling with that alias. It's whoever I had targeted is going to save that to cast Gravitas. But if you place Gravitas in there with your specific death save, now that command is going to cast your death save. Right. All right, so then over here on the right, instead of having Gravitas in there with you know, the dummy text in for the target, uh, you can actually go ahead and put the death save in there, and again, put a bogus target in there. And so now it's going to display the reuse, um, but you only have to set up that macro once. When you go into the group, you target your tank, you hit that left macro, it saves now until you log off. And so every time you hit that right macro, it's going to do that same command every time on that specific target. Right. Does that answer your question? I believe so. Or, yes. I will be trying. Mm -hmm. can, we oh. can we put those together in the same macro? Or has to be separate? Um, it has to be separate. And the reason why is uh, the alias on the left is creating the new commands. All right. And uh, when it creates the new command every time, on the right, I'm sorry. When you create the command, especially using the percent T in there, 
it may take whatever your current target is. So if you try to create it and use it at the same time, it eliminates the purpose of what the other trying to do, which is you don't have to worry about what your target is. Uh, in this example, you know, I could have it set to cast gravity on my Templar, but I'm over there targeting the enemy, targeting the main tank, whoever, it's always going to cast on that Templar. All right. You're essentially saving the value of mm -hmm. percent T yeah. somewhere in the game's memory mm -hmm. to then use it without having to have the target. I don't know if it's really like, you know, where it saves it, other than just on your client. Right, right. But it saves Somewhere. where the target was on that left macro. Yeah. It's too many as a new uh, command in there. For how long? Uh, as far as I can tell, until you log off. So until you log off, that command saves in there. Um, but you might find yourself, you know, when you go in different uh, pickup groups, for example, you might want to go ahead and uh, set it to the new healer or the new tank or whoever you're trying to get the specific uh, buff on. So every time you use it, it just saves whatever it was. It overwrites right. whatever was there before, whatever. The one on the left, we're setting the slash alias. Yeah. That's going to resave the macro command in there. Okay. And the one on the right, it's not doing anything other than actually using that command. So the left one sets it, the right one acts on it. So is that like the main assist <coughs> one that it also mm -hmm. sets it from? Yeah. Uh, you must be interested in that. Yeah. <laughs> All of these slides will be up on the EQT wire, mm -hmm. if that's okay? Yeah. Okay. Here, here. So, see, I think it was a little bit earlier. Yeah. Uh, so, this was like, you no know, slightly different because I didn't have a specific ability I was trying to cast. Uh, it was just, you know, I want to assist this target. So, you can go ahead and, you know, take the photograph of that if that answers your question. But, um, again, the left one is sitting <laughs> The left one is setting it, and the right one is acting on it again and again and again. Did you want to worry about that? Uh, who is it over there? Yes? What server do you play on? Do you give in-game private instructions? <laughs> <laughs> and how, for how much flat? <laughs> uh, 50 flat an hour was it a minute ago? But uh, we can negotiate. What server do you play on? Definitely not going to put me in bail, so my name is definitely not going to come along. <laughs> so definitely not Antonio Bale about the tunnel level. Definitely not that. Uh, did anyone else have a question? Or? I have a question about the server. Yeah. Uh, well, you guys keep saying go to EQ2 form, but you just say EQ2 wired, and it's like where? where uh, that's the chance I've had uh, Feldon is a part of. And uh, he's going to be, I'm going to give him the slide and put stuff on there. Uh, when I get home, um, I don't see there Wednesday. I'm going to make a post on the main EQ2 forums, and I'm going to have examples up there. I'm not going to use like the slide images. I'm probably just going to type it all in there. Um, but I'm going to have these examples and also a few more. I don't want to leave enough time to you know, answer questions and everything else. I didn't know exactly how much time I would need. So I actually took quite a few out of this uh, PowerPoint. Yes. Um, in ACT, mm -hmm. um, I'm really interested in, like, in one of the calls um, of labs, wherever it was. Uh, Dragon casts a spell, a Grotty mm -hmm. Spirit. So, how, where, where do you start in ACT to say, okay, read the parts that, okay, the mob is mm -hmm. casting that, and now make an audible board? Where, where was that? Uh, usually, because um, that, that was one of the things I took out was talking about the combat ACT stuff. Uh -huh. um, but basically, what you uh, would usually do with this sort of uh, situation is uh, you go to your log file, which um, if you go to your EQT folder, there should be a folder called uh, logs, and you'll have your server, and you find your character in there. So it'll be uh, EQ2 folder slash logs slash server, and then it's your name as that text file. So you would go in there, and you're trying to do like you know control F to find a specific entry, and you're gonna search for whatever the text is. So necrotic sphere, you might want to type that in there, and it's gonna search that log file for that entry. So that tells you exactly what you need to look for in the ACT for your trigger. Does that help you out? Yeah, and then okay. maybe if you could bring up the site where in ACT you okay. yeah. look or find that section. Um, so when you when you find it in your log file for the combat data, uh -huh. and this is uh, also uh, for a lot of other things, is when you actually want to do a custom uh, timer on that. We first need a trigger, and <laughs> uh, so that would actually be um, this top part up here. So in your ACT window, 
uh, the third tab over is called custom trigger. So this part right here, which has regular expression, that is where you would put the text that you find in your log file. As I you know, necrotic here is casting, or whatever the exact text is, uh, that has it there. Um, and I know necrotic sphere, I forget the exact text I use, but I know it does have a little message before it casts. But not every ability that going to be cast is going to give you a little prelude in the text file. So a lot of it just has to be reactive. Like it already cast at too late. Yeah. One of the things in your system bogged down so much mm -hmm. and I'm going to do it. Please, is the wise to restrict that category as narrow as possible so it's not having to run through? Because otherwise it just ends up in general. And if you have everything in general, it can really slow down your system depending on how much spare processing power you need outside of the game. In the ACT settings? Yes. yes. Well, that's something I didn't even know. Yeah, the category that's uh -huh. there. Uh, if you, you know, if you, if the triggers for a specific uh, name, you know, a, a name mob, you put the name of the mob that it's in there for when you go to save it, and it'll put it into its own category. And then when you're fighting that, it just, it reduces to how much it has to look through. Because yeah. yeah, it'll look through all of the general plus the encounter. Oh, that's actually too expensive. on that. Yeah. The categories are actually, can be parsed as zone names. Mm -hmm. That's why my name is so what happens is if ACT is actually smart enough that if you zone into a zone, it will actually turn on the set of triggers for the category of that zone. Plus two. We're all learning today. <laughs> and we, but it parses on the message you have entered so and so. Right. So sometimes if you call in or get called, it might not actually catch that message. Mm -hmm. So you have to be aware that sometimes you might actually have to go in and turn on that group, or you aren't going to see the triggers for the things that you're looking for. I think Guardian's Edifice is the one that doesn't do that message, if I remember right. Because I know um, Raid Hub doesn't ever catch that he's going into uh, Guardian's Edifice. But that's something I wasn't even aware of. I was just using random names in the, uh, the category section. That's pretty cool. We can take a look at that. Okay. And see why that is. I mean, that's something that we can try to track down a bit. All right, awesome. In the corner. <laughs> <laughs> you look into it. Soon. <laughs> Trademark. Soon. Hang on, guys. It's got a question over there. If you want, you can do a pause delay. You can do a pause delay. Unfortunately, that is something did not include. And for pretty good reasons. Because uh, if you had delays in the macro setups, you could just go ahead and have a command line. Uh, you know, okay, so you know, cast these two abilities, wait a second for auto attack, cast these two abilities. And so you're raiding, you're doing all your damage, your debuffs, and you're out there making chocolate milk and cookies. <laughs> well, another part of it is, and there was actually a big discussion mm -hmm. a, while, a while back. As the server is going through your macro, it's actually trying to do things oh, like yeah. follow your macro. So if it has to wait in your macro, it's actually waiting in your macro, which means that it's tying up a resource to do that which is the bigger discussion was there was a, a case where people were putting a macro in to cast all my combat arts so that one of them will hit and I have to push one button to attack. <laughs> the problem with that was is it was actually checking every combat art to see if you could cast it. I think that's a resource and that's a resource. If I remember right when I, in the early days of the concussions, all that, people were doing that to try and crash the zone and to steal the miles if I remember right. <coughs> we, uh, we recently added in something that will do a lot of client filtering on that before it sends it to the server. So if your client doesn't think it can cast that spell, it'll skip to the next one and only send off the one that it thinks it can do. The problem is if you make a really big one and it's doing a lot of checking every time you're hitting that button, you can lag yourself out that way. But you're not going to kill the zone. Yeah, go ahead. Is there a limit to macros how many lines you can have? Because I found target macro. Because I, I want one target time. macro for different zones. Mm -hmm. But I can only put 10 in because the 11th one, even though it's not in the zone, it won't target that 11th. Mm -hmm. um, 10 sounds right to me. I usually only keep my macros pretty short. I rarely go over more than four or five commands in a given macro. I'm, I'm not trying to make macros do everything for me. Uh, it's hard, I'm just trying to find certain ways to speed things up. Um, I actually do enjoy playing the game. 
Uh, did anyone else have any other questions? Yes. I've got a quick question about uh, the aliases. Uh -huh. Just, uh, is there any way that you know of to make an alias for multiple commands, if that makes sense? Uh, unfortunately, uh, alias when we save one command to it, it's making a specific command, like, you know, uh, such as a slash main and assist that I had earlier, it's going to do one command. Uh, what you can do, though, um, you could have multiple aliases that are all called in the uh, same uh, act on macro. So you're having like these five uh, separate macros that say, you know, all right, do this ability on this person, cast this debuff, you know, whoever I'm targeting or whatever, and then also, you know, assist this target. And then you have these three macros for that, and then one that have all three of those commands in it together. So you can, you can have, you need a separate macro for each of the alias commands, but the command that it creates, you can have all those in the same macro. Yeah. Uh, one thing about the uh, macros, mm -hmm. most any ability that is not instantaneous, um, you don't get queued. Mm -hmm. So you basically get the first thing, and if you try to do something like cast a spell, that's queued, and nothing else is going to be able to do um, So it's really hard, you can't like, queue up extra actions or anything. Uh, if, I, just if, if I were to already, um, like target, I would get that same thing mm -hmm. one. Because uh, I don't use it to, for too many of my combat arcs. Like, I don't group combat arcs together. Uh, I'll usually group like, you know, certain messages or something into it, but I really don't ever you know, put like, you know, two or more EAs into the same macro. Um, but how the EPQ handles mac the, the commands is, you know, if you're already casting something, it'll keep something up. So if you're not casting anything into a macro to you know, cast two abilities, it should cast the first one and queue up the second one. But if you're casting at the time that you use the macro, it's only going to queue up that first ability that's going to ignore the second. So if you have two abilities in there, just make sure you're not casting anything when you hit. Or and that's cancel sure. spell cast. Cancel spell <laughs> cast. <laughs> yeah. yeah, emergency cures, emergency heals. Potions. Uh, yes. And uh, some kind of macros. Mm -hmm. uh, Something I experienced uh, when I was trying to figure out how to set up the whole um, the AA and the hotbar uh, software is I I, um, I actually did the save first and then the load and then save hotkeys again and it just got all jumbled up so it wasn't working. Right. So that's why I found that I had to actually do the load first, then put the save in there. And whenever you're loading up the macros from the hotkeys, the save and load hotkeys command, it usually does jumble it up. <laughs> is what I found. Uh, did you have anything else to add to that? Okay. Um, did anyone else have anything? Home repair questions? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering, uh, um, what, when you do post this on the forums, you just have to to make sure it gets sticky? Uh, probably Toby, and talk to him about that now. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Put that in the message title at the top. You know, duck mounts. You know, by the way, you say this. Show, show us your duck mounts. Show us your duck mounts. Yeah. Yes. Show us your duck mounts. <laughs> yes. Okay. You make a macro and say that you put three spells, mm -hmm. three nukes or something, and do you want a primary to shortest or longest uh, refresh time spell? Uh, that really comes down to preference, um, because if you have the short Ryu, like you know, if it's an ability that's up every like, you know, three seconds, like I believe like, it's the, um, uh, the Enchanter Interrupt, it's something like you know, three second reuse. Like if you had that at the start of your macro, you know, you're, it's constantly going to be up, so you're never going to get that third ability. But if you have like, a longer reuse at the start, it's only going to cast it first, and then it can focus on the other shorter reuse. Uh, it's really preference, but I'm um, just keeping in mind, like uh, we were talking about a moment ago, you know, if you're already casting something, that first ability is almost going to be queued up. And it's only going to ever cast, you know, one ability to queue the, first, the second ability. So that third ability is really going to come off uh, if you have very short reuse timers. Right. Anything else? Macros, though, I've had to have like three abilities in a, in a row. It'll start the first, it'll ignore the second, whatever you have less is what it's used of. Um, so if you have five or six in a row, it ignores the whole until the very last one. 
it, that's actually correct. And the reason why is because your client is casting the first spell, mm -hmm. and that's like you clicked the second spell, but your first spell is casting, so when it says, oh, you're casting your spell, it does the third one, and oh, I can cue this one up. Mm -hmm. So you end up queuing up the last thing because it's actually like you clicked three different things. Unless you put in the command, finish your macro with slash clear up and then the queue. And then it'll clear out your queue so you can get out but your But you won't, you won't get three. No, you won't get the macro. But it will take the first one back. Whatever. <laughs> We're learning. Um, so yeah, you know, that it could work. I mean, it's really just about trial and error when it comes to macros. You know, if, see if something works, and if not, you try to fix it. All right. Um, yes. Not, not necessarily a question, but maybe a comment. Mm -hmm. You know, I've learned along the way, especially with the radial timers. We um, all default to blue. Like, yeah. Time. I color code all of mine, mm -hmm. so I know the type of damage. I, you know, noxious is always green. Focus. Yeah. On um, black. I think that might have been a, something I didn't quite mention uh, when I was going through this earlier. But when you're in a timer window, if you click on this little uh, square in the bottom right, you click on that, you can actually set your own custom color. And that's how I had in the, uh, you know, when I just let the little demonstration go for that, um, that animation towards the very end, you know, that's why it showed up as one being red and the other one being that uh, cyan blue. Uh, so you can actually go ahead and even color uh, the different uh, timers on there. For ATP. Yeah, it's people in the turquoise. So. Turquoise. Sorry, <laughs> it's turquoise. You're right. My bad. All right. Um. Let's see. Uh, does anyone else have anything else that they're wanting to ask? It's not really on the macro for mm -hmm. ACT, but I was looking at what you did on gravitas. You did a percent T on one person. Yeah. I haven't played my turns in much lately. Like used, mm -hmm. used to, you couldn't recast it on the same person. The same time, they changed that? To they did. They did. Okay, because I used to have my family set up where I had every healer. They got rid of the list. And the list, somebody could come down and pick up the next one that was available. Uh, I think the only ability. You don't have to do that anymore. I think one of the few abilities that still has the MIDI on it is like the hand. I think that's one of the few ones that you can have playing games anymore. Uh, but if you're more than five, they keep casting on the same healer. They don't have any anymore for that. Okay. I, I didn't realize they changed that. Oh, that's all right. Uh, I think I saw a hand up over here somewhere. Never mind. All right. Um, let's see. How are we at? I'm going to try to be 42. I should have put the other one on the uh, PowerPoint. <laughs> uh, oh, if you guys don't have any other, other questions, um, I do have uh, another sample on my uh, computer, if you don't mind me uh, swapping it real quick. Uh, I could do another example of using macros uh, to solve you no know, problems. All right, I'm going to go pretty fast on this. Terribly sorry. I didn't think it was going to go this fast when I was testing in my hotel room. <laughs> I should have made a macro for that, you're right. I'm not going to make a good John yourself macro. All right. <laughs> This was the other one. Yeah, there we go. So part of the reason why I did take this out is, uh, if you guys caught the presentation, uh, I believe it was earlier, they're talking about how they might change the whole mount situation to where you can actually use like the Lieber mount, even though the stats for your uh, flyer, if I remember right. Um, but this is one of my favorite examples, just for talking about basically, you know. Uh, trying to solve certain problems and how you approach it. Uh, so I have my lovely bunny mount, and this looks pretty much about right. 
for what we end up doing in game a lot uh, these days is, you know, you find the, uh, the mount that you like, you cast it, and then you have to go to the other one. So we open up the mount tab, have to drag it down, you know, cancel it, recast it. It can get pretty exhausting to do, you know, day in, day out. All right, so the first guess is, you know, I open up my macro tab and I just drag it in, you know. Use item, this is simple enough, right? Well, I go ahead and test it and, you know, you can only use uh, items from your inventory. So I have to take it from my mount tab and I have to put it in my bags. So I take the mount out of the bags and I try it again. Well, unfortunately, I forgot to cancel the mount I was already using. All right, so, you know, I have to keep adding stuff to this every time, so. All right, so, you know, that little mount button that they have in there to summon and cancel the mount, you know, I'm just gonna drag it over, right? We can drag any ability in here, and unfortunately, this is one of the rare few examples. You'll get this error message if you try to drag the uh, mount summon into here. All right, so, I can't use that, but there should be a command for it because there's a UI icon for it. All right, so, I go onto the uh, wiki right there, and you know, I'm trying to find something to do with the mounts to summon it or cancel it, whatever. Well, unfortunately, I don't find it. So now, I go into my chat tab, and you know, I'm trying to find it, so I type in slash mount. All right, so I do that, I hit the tab button, and that returns all the possible commands that it's found on it. All right, so I go through that list up there, and sure enough, uh, towards the very top, I have an option there for summon mount. All right, so, that sounds pretty good for me. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go in game, and I'm just gonna type in that command and see what happens. Uh, Cause I'm a error taker right there. So sure enough, it works exactly like the button uh, in the UI piece right there. So it's uh, summoning them out if I don't have one on there, and it's canceling it if I already have one up. All right, so I got that. So now I know, I, before I use the button mount, I needed to use this command to go ahead and cancel the mount I already had up. So I do that, and sure enough, it works, you know, everything is gravy right now. I have my one macro on the right, which is canceling the reindeer and loading up the bunny, but I still have to hit that button twice to go back to my flyer mount. Well, instead of doing uh, the little button in the UI right there, I just make a macro with summon mount twice in there. And what's it gonna do is, if I have a mount up, it's gonna cancel it and then recast it. So I got that. And now, I just got it down to two buttons. I can put on any hotbar anywhere. So it's going back and forth between my uh, bunny mount and my flyer mount right there. And, you know, it's doing all the work for me. I don't have to open up any UI pieces, you know, nothing. All I have to do is just hit that one button and I go to the mount of choice. Well, unfortunately, you know, I'm changing AAs one day. And, you know, I go to load my bunny mount up because I want to go hop around places. Well, because I don't have a mount up, uh, that summon mount command at the very start is taking precedence over the bunny. So I'm clicking the icon that got me the bunny the other day, but I'm getting my flyer mount instead. Well, this is where I need to find a way to cancel it from summoning the mount, which brings us to the comment brought up earlier, which was cancel spellcast. So now I have these two lovely uh, macros right here. And what this is gonna do for me is, I have the default mount, uh, which is, if I don't have a mount up, it's gonna summon one. And if I do have a mount up, it's gonna cancel it and load my default. And I have my bunny mount. And this doesn't have to be the bunny mount. You know, it could be your glider squirrel or your jumping dinosaur. Uh, it's gonna cancel a mount if it's up. And if there is not a mount up, it's gonna instantly cancel itself from casting that default mount. And instead, it's gonna load up whatever mount you wanted for that. So I thought that was pretty cool, and um, it was just something I originally intended to share, but I took it out. Um, but it, it sort of talks about how you know, you're going through the macro process and sort of debugging along the way. All right, and um, I believe that ended the part for the, yeah. Uh, so that was the bunny mount right there. So wouldn't it be awesome if you could have slash summon mount space mm -hmm. zero? <laughs> turn your mouth off uh -huh. instead well, of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually surprised it doesn't work that way already. <laughs> so your bunny mouth is in your bag. Mm -hmm. Well, the uh, 
icon in the um, in the UI, even the command right there, it's a toggle. You know, it's saying you know if you don't have a mount open, cast it. If not, cancel it. And uh, you know, I really don't mind having to add that one extra step in there um, to make it work. But you know, it really isn't too much of a hassle for me. So I've never bothered to email t uh, Tom Toby or whoever, or uh, you know, Tim Toby. Is it Tim Toby or Tom Toby? Tom. Tom. What is he here? I'm not going to ask him. I'm going to ask Toby. Yeah. Be very technical in your questions. Yes. And bring up duck mounts. They got to happen. Yes. All right. Uh, so yeah, that was another one I wanted to show you guys. And um, I'm going to have plenty more uh, when I go ahead and make the forum post. Uh, but I just wanted to show you guys today, you know, uh, a few different examples, you know, how far you can push the macros in game. And, you know, uh, hopefully I was able to answer, you know, everyone's questions. And, um, you know, uh, I would probably look forward to seeing this on the forum probably around Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, and other than that, you know, if anyone has any questions they've thought about in the last few minutes. Yes. ahead and open up notepad real quick because I do know the command off the top of my head on this. So this is a command in game. Uh, slash, okay, let me see. <laughs> yeah, let me see here. Nope. Here we go. All right, so we're going to make this huge. Let's see, 72. <laughs> Maybe take it down a step. All right, so uh, this is a, game, a command in uh, game. And so if you go in your EQ2 options, uh, you can turn down the particle settings, but you can't fully remove it. And um, what this command does right here is it completely removes the particles. But... This is a huge button here. If you have a mob with red circles, you need to turn it back on. <laughs> Just saying that right now, because um, the first night we were doing the uh, ages n times two, I had this command on, and I completely forgot about it. And you know, I'm dying to red circles left and right. I have no idea what's going on. I'm like, oh, my particles are off. Um, it does reset when the zone is off. Okay. So you got that, and um, I'm just going to put it on here, uh, just in case anyone does write this down. Uh, you can just change it from negative 1 to a 1 uh, to turn it back on. Or even, I think, 0 will, turn, will fix it itself. Um, if that doesn't work, there is also, I believe, a slash combat filter. And um, do you know about this one? OK. Yeah, so that one changes uh, what it's tracking in the log file. And so uh, I believe. Uh, three is for the full raid, two is for the group, and one is for personal. Uh, if that doesn't work, you just have to do slash log and turn off logs at that point. So combat filter doesn't actually change what we're logging. Mm -hmm. That actually tells the server to not even send you that data. Great. So if you're network <laughs> the reason we built it uh -huh. originally was to help with network lag like, for people with low rank. Oh, okay. And that's the one that resets on itself and part of the priority is that. Yeah, combat filter doesn't Additionally, as well, that combat text, we send it down super pack tight, try to keep it small, and the client has to rebuild the translated text message based on it. So it can be pretty expensive on the learning machines. That's pretty cool. 
I'm going to interrupt your dev uh, meeting over there. And they got a question. Some things that you can do with an app, uh, ACP itself, to try to go and help with some of the lag. Number one, don't tell it to automatically go and switch the uh, log files when they're recently updated. Go and manually have it going so you have to go in and manually select your log file every time. That way it's not sitting there and pulling every single log file that's in your log directory, underneath that log directories, every single time it's going through its update cycle. Um, if you tell it to go and do that, it cuts all of that out and that'll save a lot of time. Especially if you have a lot of log files from where it's splitting it, where you play lots of characters, um, that type of thing. Um, you know, so that's one thing that can go and clean out the log file directory periodically. Um, don't let the log files go too terribly large. Could, it, could you set the log files to go to like a RAM disk? Because you know RAM's cheap and then they're clear every time. And um. I think it has to go to the EQ2 folder if you have the logs turned on. Uh, what I find myself doing is uh, after every few uh, raids or whatever, uh, I'll just set it off to my external hard drive. So I maybe only ever have like three or four days of ACT data saved yeah. and everything else is on an external. You could link your log directory to a random discussion. Oh, okay. It just disappear every time you just, yeah, it's every Yes. And if you yes. do you want to save them, you can zip them, they get Mm -hmm. like 99, it's 99 text. percent of the threat. Yeah, it's all text. <laughs> it's all text. It will compress down to nothing. You can actually just leave the zip file right there in the folder, open it up, drag your any log files you want, and drag them right into the right into the zip file and close it up and you're all set. Awesome. All right. Uh, anyone else have any other questions or comments? <laughs> Why indeed? <laughs> Would anyone like Oreos? I only have a few, but I'll leave them for the devs. Leave them for the devs. Okay. Hey, Carlos. Well, the devs don't want them, so. <laughs> If you do want to, oh yeah, they're up here. <laughs>